Tony, I asked you after the game about analysing the game and where you think things may have gone wrong. So you've got a couple of days now to do so. What are your conclusions of that game against Nigeria? Uh, first of all, in terms of the processes, we always review the game, whether we win, tie or, or loss. Uh, we review the game together. The team is actually amazing when it comes to that process, about the openness of what was good, what can do better, and the players are involved in that process a lot and take a lot of ownership on it. Um, if you look at a positive side first, what we took away was our attacking game in terms of getting into the final third and getting shots. It's one of our top 15 performance uh, over the last 15 games. The, the number of final third entries and the number of shots, 28 shots. That's the most part of the positive part of it. If you take the negative part and the learnings was that our conversion rate was not the same. We should have scored four goals if you look at our normal conversion rate. And then if you look at the number of goals we conceded, it was too many considering how few times Nigeria was in our box. And there were some uh, collective and individual mistakes that we talked through there, especially in the second ball area that we need to do better against Canada, which we did very, very good against Ireland. The, the part of the game that you can influence, obviously, is substitutions. And again, you waited until the 82nd minute to make that first substitution. Is it, would, it, would you do it any differently, having reviewed it? I think it's a valid and fair question. Uh, I said there that I'm going to review that and say what, what I did look at is that I think we had uh, momentum and some players performed well. Uh, and then when this called 3-1, was it in 74th minute or so? Uh, we did a, the first sub within six minutes after that. And then we did a Chids uh, sub four minutes after that. So it looked like it was very, very late if you look at the minute in the game. But it wasn't that many minutes after they uh, scored 3-1. But I do think that, especially the shit subs, maybe I could have done a double sub with uh, pokes and shits at the same time to get that uh, effect. Uh, but at the same time, it's easy to, to know the answer afterwards. But I also need to review my in-game performance always in terms of in-game management. Can you understand the frustration for a lot of people that it did take so long? And that substitution is a defender for an attacker. And obviously you've, you've reshuffled, you put a defender up front as an attacker. Can you understand that frustration from the outside? Was it frustration on that? Uh, that's the general feeling, yeah. That, yeah. that the feeling was you're chasing a game and you're taking an attacker off and then you bring a defender on. Okay, yeah, logic if you put it that way. But the, the ones, I think the fans that have followed us over the last two years have seen that Alana is our go-to when we go to double nines. And I think a lot of fans were happy and proud about her effort as a double nine when we played New Zealand, when we scored two goals in extra time. And she's been there in the Olympics against GB. And when we won the game against GB, she was also the double nine. So there's nothing new for the ones that have followed us for a long time. Uh, Alana has a fantastic aerial presence up there. And it's the type of forward that you want to have in the front line but if you put the question like you did meaning put a defender for a forward I can understand the frustration but if you look at the profile of the nine that we needed at the time and then you add pokes attacking mindset on attacking set plays as well um, I hope that more people might see the logic in it and it was prepared and it's something we've done over two years 23 and 23 at the moment it's been 14 one Sam obviously hasn't been available and it's a forced is, is that something that, I mean, I'm sure you know, like four subs have been used only in the two games. Is that something, again, you would look to do something differently or is that something you've planned to do? I mean, talk about squad depth. It feels like haven't really had the trust in other players to come on and make a difference in games. I definitely have the trust in players. We know that everyone knows I have the trust in all the 23 players that are here. Um, I think we saw that against France, for example, when we had 16 different outfield players. Um, you always play the game in front of you. Uh, you plan for a starting lineup, you plan for a finishing lineup. But I've also been very clear on stats from previous tournaments that continuity and player availability is also a key factor. Mm -hmm. And if you look at England when they won the Euros, for example, playing with the same starting lineup in every single game, because football is also a relationship sport. And I think a team, for example, against Ireland that I think uh, performed solid, if you look at a goalkeeper back line, the two centre midfielders, all those things, to have some continuity in those positions. Uh, I think is natural uh, and then using the game changer if you look at what we did against Ireland it's a certain type of change in information Pokes comes on uh, EVE comes on if you look at the Nigeria game it's a different type of game changer mindset so but in terms of the trust I have 100% trust in the 23 players it's just how and when I use them and I understand that this hundred opinions out there in terms of who should have played instead, who should have started. And those opinions always get stronger when you lose a game. And as a coach, I'm never better than the last game. And I lost the last game, and then there's going to be a lot of opinions. And that's fair. 
I think it gets magnified. If you go back to the Nigeria game and you talk about those substitutions that were made and when you made them, when you compare it to, say, Nigeria, they made game-changing substitutions sooner. They made four substitutions. Obviously, one of them, Ashwala, which is obviously a, a world-class player, makes a massive difference. And I think that's where the questions even rise more so, is the yeah. fact that they've made those substitutions and we hadn't made any. I wouldn't say you should compare with other teams because if you do that, there's also teams that did zero subs in games and only one and two. And if you go to England winning the Euros, they never did more than three subs and the same subs every but time. You mentioned about the team that you're playing, it's the moment you're reacting or being proactive against the current opposition. So they're making those key substitutions. Are you referencing that I should make more subs because they make more subs? Or what, what, are, what are you referencing well, here? Well, the fact that you, you're 2-1 down, or 1-1, one, one, then 2-1, one, then 3-1, and then there's a reaction even later than that. So it's more about whether or not you had the belief in the players to make the substitution mm -hmm. sooner, or was there always a plan to bring on someone like um, Pokes to then put Alana forward? Uh, that was, yeah, like I said, that's always been the pre-plan for two years. We've done it in tournaments before, we've done it in key games before. So using Alana as a nine when we're going yeah. for a goal, that's straight from the training ground and been for two years. There's nothing desperate or reactive. Yeah. Ask any player how much, and that goal that we scored, straight from the training ground. Look at Shid's inside pocket crosses and what she gave straight from the training ground. So definitely pre-planned. Sam Kerr, she announced yesterday she's available to play. Did she play? Did she train today? Did she take part in the session? And will she play tomorrow? Fair question. Uh, we had an extra press conference yesterday so that we make sure that we really respect all the fans out there that wants to have answers. And Sam took a time to answer all those questions. So in terms of today and tomorrow, I will quote Sam uh, as an answer and then move on and focus on, on the game tomorrow. And what Sam said yesterday is that it's always been a plan to rest her for two games and rehab reassess going into this game and then it's going to be down to the wire uh, we're going to have a meeting tonight and the triple sm the medical team is going to tell me what minutes she's available and what the risks are included with that and like sam said herself we're not going to say anything until game day whether we use her as a starter or a game changer off the bench it's all about a plan for 90 minutes and how we think she might have the most effect in the game and also the risks so did she join today with the team I'm not going to comment on who trains and didn't train. <laughs> what I can say though is she's been on an individual plan like every player has been and there were some players that were adjusted today. Some players that had minutes load yesterday also did some individual stuff today. So if you say train, every, every player trained but very differently. So she didn't train with the team? It depends on what you mean train with the team. <laughs> I had her football boots on and trained with the team. <laughs> she had the football boots on, yes. And tra so she didn't train with the team. <laughs> uh, Mary Fowler, Ivy Lewick, are they available? Are they fit and ready to go? I mean, I know we, we talk, talked mm -hmm. about the, the concussion six-day rule and that should, they, both of them potentially would be available so long as that all goes to plan. Has it gone to plan? It has gone to plan. As of right now, uh, Mary trained a full training session today and it's going to be reviewed tonight and I'm going to get a, hopefully a clearance from the medical team tonight. Uh, and then when it comes to Ivy Louis, she's not going to be available for the game. Okay. Um, the pressure, the magnitude of the game tomorrow, everything hangs on this one game. Now it comes down to this one game in the group. How do you, how do you deal with that in terms of with the group? How do you try and alleviate some of that pressure, not only the group, but for yourself as well, personally? Well, first of all, we love this. This is what football is about. Uh, we knew it was going to be a very, very tight group when we saw the draw and most likely going to come down to the last game. Um, and this team have been around in this before. 2019 in the World Cup, in the Olympics, when we played the US in the last group stage game and we lost to Sweden in the second game. This team is used to have the back against the wall and come up big in, in big games. So I look at it as... We're playing a World Cup on home soil. We have a massive amount of support from our supporters um, and we're ready. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy. It's going to be a tight game. It's going to be a tough game, but we're definitely ready. Mentally, physically, tactically, we have a very clear plan and a ton of belief. As you mentioned, World Cup, home soil. Um, some of the players have mentioned about never being as nervous as they, have, they were before that first game against Ireland. And that will continue, and now this even more so. So how are you dealing with that with them? Have that, has that been talked about? Have you noticed anything with the, with the players? I've noticed determina determination, uh, commitment, belief. Um, like a couple of players said to me on the bus going to the training today, say, I wish, to I wish the game was today. We just want to play. We want to get out there. We want to play. That's what I sense in the team. Just finally, Canada. 
how, what sort of challenges are they going to pose for you? Actually, there's a lot of similarities between the two teams. They're very well organized in the pressing game. Uh, they got some really good pace in the transition. Um, they're strong and physical, good on set plays. Um, so there's two teams that match up in that sense, almost like two speed trains coming at each other. So it's going to be an intense, tough physical game for sure. Wish you all the very best. Thank you very much. Thanks. Did you enjoy that? There's so much more, so why not hit subscribe and download the Optus Sport app.